Welcome to Dead Man Talking. Tonight's show is the next instalment from the wonderful mind of Smokey Beardman. As ever, do let us know down below in the comments what you thought. Please do like and share. It really does help build the channel and our community further. And of course, don't forget to hashtag Team Fear. And so, without further ado, let's get into tonight's story, entitled The Naturals, The Paladin. Let's get straight into that. No, no, no. Put thine weight into it. Thou wilt not crack a single scale of my hide like that. Get up, young one, and try again. Brizane was suddenly putting me through my paces today. The old one said that the time had come and something big was coming that I had to be ready for. Since then, he had been training me twice as hard, twice as long. And by the end of every day, I was so tired that I could barely move. But man, was I getting buff. When I first came to Camp Natural, I was 130 pounds of stringy ting. Now, I was over 200 and looked like a Greek god. Two years have passed since I first started training with Brazilian to become a paladin. I have since graduated high school courses and got to be present when my new baby brother was born. My dad, who had taken my refusal to go back into football personally, had barely said two words to me each time I went back to visit. But he was all kinds of excited to be having a son that he could be proud of. This hurt, but not much. As odd as it might sound, Brazane had become like a father figure to me. He cared about my well-being, showed that he was interested in me, and worried when I went on dangerous missions. It was weird at first, but I have found myself staying in his barn instead of staying in my room, in the living quarters. At night, he would tell me stories about the old days, the history of his people. He would tell me about the Earth Mother and the Sky Father, how they had two children, Sol the son, and Luna the daughter. They were the ones who created the lesser dragons to mock their parents, as well as the other dark and sinister creatures to add insult to injury. All because they wanted to be together in a rather taboo union. When Earth Mother and Sky Father found them together, they banished them to the sky where Sky Father could keep them apart, so they would not produce Armageddon. Armageddon was the name of the offspring that would end the world on fire and ice, wind and ash, water and earth. Man was the first creation that was made, and was loved by the Earth Mother and Sky Father, but they were tricked and turned away from their creators by Sol and Luna. As punishment, the Morguan were created to punish sin where it gathers in secret. For if the world found out the truth, it would break the curse that holds Sol and Luna apart in the sky. As long as the others in the team and I could keep it under wraps, the curse would remain in place. I told Brizane that that sounded a lot like a story from the Christian Bible. He told me that the Bible was a representation of the truth, but far off enough that it was not a danger of breaking the curse. And to be honest, even the story I just told you is not the full, real story. I don't want to be responsible for the end of the world. I was huffing and puffing and sore all over, but I came at Brazane and gave it my all. My katana, given to me by Mia when I showed a talent with it, swung down and Brazane blocked it. As the sword made contact, it sung, and then I heard a loud sickening crack. I pulled and backed up into my ready stance before I realised that Brazane was bleeding. Oh my god, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean... Never mind that, young paladin. Thou hast done exactly what I told ye to do. I will be fine. I know, but wait. You said paladin. You've... you've never called me that. At least not since we started training. That is because there is nothing else I can teach ye. Thou art ready to become a paladin of the Earth Mother and Sky Father. I am so proud of ye. So, I am a paladin now? He shook his head and chuckled in his growling voice, the rumble of which I have come to be comforted by over the years. <laughs> no, young paladin, not yet, but soon. 
I shall take ye to the cave which hides the entrance to the land of the Earth Mother and Sky Father. From there thou wilt have to complete the tasks of the Paladin. If ye fail, ye may die. If ye succeed, thou will meet the Earth Mother and Sky Father. If they approve of ye, thou will be blessed with a new name and the title of Paladin. Thine powers have become more powerful than I ever could have guessed. Thou art quite the interesting one. I wouldn't be surprised if they are already expecting ye. When do we leave? Talk to the others. Make sure they are aware of what will happen. This is for ye alone. They may not accompany us. I shall be thine guide, as is tradition. Go now. I shall rest, as should ye. We will leave in the morning after the sun rises. If they have any questions, I am sure they do. I'll answer them. But it must be just us. If they try so follow, they will receive the wrath of the Earth Mother and Sky Father. I said my goodnights and went to tell the others the good news. They were surprised to say the least. Costas was worried, but agreed that this was a rare opportunity and that it would be an asset to have a holy paladin on the team. The others weren't so sure. Mia said that it was too dangerous. Jake said that I was too young to go alone. And Terry was worried that the nanites wouldn't hold up if I took another blow to the head. He obviously forgot that I was healed by Brisain long ago. And Ty said it was some kind of Morguan trick. While everyone was opposing this very idea of me going alone with Brisain, Tack was quiet and pensive. I looked to him when everyone noticed I wasn't listening, and they looked at him as well. He was quiet a minute longer, and then finally spoke. You are an adult. This is your life. We all care about you. Hell, you're like a little brother to me. To all of us. I've noticed how close you are to Brisain. He's been like a father you always wished you had. That much is obvious. You have been training very hard for the last couple of years, and you have been a huge help on missions. You are becoming something quite special. We are worried for you, no doubt. At this, he looked at everyone with a stern gaze. And we would all be very selfish if we tried to keep you from bettering yourself and achieving your dream, especially after all the work you have put in just to get here. You are taking with you the best of the best, even if it's just our skills. You have learned well from all of us. We need to trust in our training, and most of all, trust in you. Like you have trusted in us for the last two years. I just want to say, good luck. And come back safe to us so we can congratulate you. Go get them, or start the seer. With this, he made his way to the elevator and disappeared. Everyone else stood there for another minute and then wished me luck and each one gave me a hug. Mia even gave me a kiss on the cheek and said that when I get back she will make sure I have whatever I want for dinner and they would throw me a party. I made my way to my room and took a shower, not knowing when I would get to have another one. I looked for Tank as I lay in bed, wondering where he went. I spotted him up with Brazane. They must have been discussing the journey I would soon be taking. Soon, he departed Brisane's barn. I decided I was going to just go to bed. Tomorrow was early and close, as Brisane likes to say, when I get impatient to learn more or hear another story. Early the next morning, I was ready and packed. I made my way up to the ground level and looked around. Everything was just waking up. Men were getting things going, fixing jeeps or helicopters or performing maintenance on buildings and so on. I made my way over to Brazane's barn, close by, expecting to see the dragon napping. What I didn't expect was to see the whole team, including Agent Costas, standing with Brazane. They all came to see me off and final well wishes. Mia teared up, as did Terry. I did my best to assure them I would be fine, and I would come back to tell them about my adventure. And with a command from Brazane, I jumped on his back, and we were off. We left the ground far behind in no time, and were flying through the air like a missile. I had rode him like this a few times, so I was used to the sensation. His huge bat-like wings thrust powerfully as he flew gracefully. I never got tired of this. We flew like this for a few hours. 
specially designed flight suit that Terry had manufactured for me was keeping me warm in the high altitude, and the breathing exercises Costas had trained me in were helping me to keep from passing out in the thin air. I was having the time of my life. It was almost dark when Brazain began to camouflage and descend. He landed outside a small forest, and I got things around ready for camp. Brazain lit a fire, and I got right to cooking some food I brought as rations. Brazain told me it would be another day before we reached the cave. In the meantime, he told me stories as the fire burnt, and soon I was asleep. I awoke the next morning to Brazain stirring. I ate an apple and a granola bar, and we were off again. As we flew, Brazain warned me about a creature we might encounter before we reached the cave, and that it was a relic of Sol and Luna's treachery, a self-replicating beast that stalked the woods, leading lost travellers further into its woods before testing their metal and ultimately devouring them. The forest of Syracuse sounded like a frightening place, but I was ready to do this. It was late afternoon when we finally made the descent to the woods that led to the cave. The woods looked ancient and felt powerful. Tall trees and brief bushes, thorns and foliage. The canopy let light in, but only enough to see where you were going, not enough to see the sky above. We made a camp outside the woods, and Brazain said that this was for the best, that we didn't want to meet the beast in the dark, especially if it had offspring. The next morning was damp and with light rain, and the forest smelled alive. I went into seer mode as soon as we set out. We travelled for half a day when I saw an aura hiding in the bushes ahead. It was a large dog-headed bear looking thing. Its aura looked sick but strong. Then it poked its head out looking as small as it could and waited for me to notice it. When I looked its way, it ducked back into the thicket. Brazain noticed it too, but he was hidden by his camouflage. He then made contact with me through telepathy. Something we use quite often due to him using his voice made it hard for him to breathe fire and hurt his throat since he barely spoke to anyone before he met me. Careful, Ustad. The beast is trying to tempt ye to follow it. We should follow, but keep thine wits about ye. It won't be able to tell thou haveth the sight, and it won't be able to sense me at all. Don't be afraid. Thou can take it, but it won't know that. Be brave, be ready, follow at your own pace, and don't let it wear you out. As you wish. It didn't seem that strong, but you taught me well to never underestimate my opponent. We followed the beast for hours. It seemed to try and get us to follow faster, and when that didn't work, it would disappear for 10 or 15 minutes at a time. I still didn't change my pace. After about five hours of following it, it must have gotten impatient, could it suddenly decided to walk right up to me. I wasn't afraid. Even when it stood up on its hind legs and stared at me, I didn't flinch. I could see at least three weak points that were wide open. It had scars and patches missing in its fur. It was definitely huge, but other than its obvious strength, weight and the claws and teeth, it was just a beast. It seemed to thrive on negative emotions, and it was not getting anything from me. I was clear-headed and just accepting that this might happen. What are you, boy? You are not like anything I have ever encountered. I don't sense fear. I don't sense arrogance. I don't even sense curiosity or doubt or bravery. No one wanders into my woods and meets me without a feeling of some kind of emotion. Just what are you? I don't have to answer you. You are irrelevant to my purpose here. I ask that you either bring me to the cave or get out of my way so that I may continue on my way. With this, it sort of changed rapidly. It was afraid. I wasn't being cocky or rude, I was being honest and straightforward. My emotions were in check and I knew I had nothing to be afraid of. What is your name, foolish one? Tell me who it is I shall eat today. I don't know who you will eat today, I can't help you there. As for who I am, I am Ustad. 
With that, the beast lunged at me, swiping its claws at me clumsily. I dodged to one side and did a backflip, putting distance between me and it. It made to charge me again. It was definitely fast, but it would appear that it was used to chasing its prey, running it down, and when it couldn't run anymore, or it tripped or tried to hide, then it would take advantage. What it wasn't used to was someone fighting back. However, I never drew my sword. As it charged, I waited for it to be on the downward movement of its gallop, and when I leaped onto its head and ran down its back and landed behind it, it turned again, and this time it was enraged. Perfect. Just what I wanted. As it swung and chomped and struggled to gain any advantage, it didn't realise that I had made him move under a tree, a tree that happened to have a beehive hanging down from its branch. When it was in perfect position, I grabbed a throwing star, quickly took aim, and let loose. The hive fell right onto its head. It was like a grenade gone off. The beast panicked and panicked and panicked some more. Me on the other hand, I went completely still. I didn't move a muscle. I barely breathed. I got stung once or twice, but I didn't move. The beast, however, was losing its shit. The bees didn't like someone losing their shit. And finally, after so much struggle, the beast ran off with its tail between its legs, howling and bellowing into the afternoon sun, and the bees in hot pursuit. I calmly walked over to where Brizane was laying waiting for me to be done with my fun. Thou handled that very well. I thought ye would have been forced to kill it. If I had killed it, I wouldn't have been able to follow it to the cave. At this, Brisain laughed deep and loud, with his growling voice quivering. <laughs> Thou learnt well, very well. This is thine quest. Continue. With that, I followed the way the beast had gone. It wasn't hard. It had torn up the leaf-strewn ground as it made a beeline. <laughs> Forgive the pun for the deep woods. Before the sun had finally set, we came across the cave, and outside it was the beast whimpering and shaking and licking its wounds. Thank you very much for showing me how to get to the cave. I'll be on my way now. I growled and tried to stand up until it winced in pain and lay back down. You will get yours, boy. This cave is dangerous. None come out alive, and those that do are not human. At this, it laughed a barking, guttural laugh. I didn't know you cared. I'm touched. Goodbye, poor beast. You have my pity. With that, we made our way inside. After about 15 minutes, Brisane stopped me. He grabbed a rock with his front claw and threw it forward. It appeared to go through a curtain that was invisible until the rock went through. From here, young Paladin, is the realm of the Earth Mother and Sky Father. Thou will face three trials. Each one will reward ye with Paladin proper. The armor and weapon of the Holy Paladin. Thou must go alone from here. Leave thine gear, and only take thine clothes on thine back. Otherwise, the trials will be void, and thou wilt die. I will meet ye at the end with thine belongings, if you make it out alive. Good luck, and keep thine head straight. We nodded to each other, and I left him my gear, only taking my shirt, shoes, jeans and socks, and underwear, and then... I was off, not knowing what I would find. I stepped through the curtain. The other side was no different except the air smelled strange, like a barn full of fresh straw and alfalfa. I moved along, and I could no longer see Brisane. I came out the other end and was almost blinded by the sudden light. The sight that greeted me was astounding. I was standing above a wide, complex labyrinth, hedges, stone walls, Rose bushes and an opening in the middle glowed from somewhere inside. From somewhere inside, I heard a growl that built into a roar, and then just as quickly died out. I get it. The item I need is in the middle, and I need to get out the other side. Might have to fight a creature or run. Well, standing around won't get the task done. With that, I was off and entered the opening of the maze. 
I remembered that Tack told me about mazes. Best way to get through a maze is to follow a wall, pick a side. But that works fine when it's a maze on paper. But I have at least one beast to deal with. If I have to run, I might lose the wall and end up walking in circles. And then I remembered the Mind Palace training. I was still having trouble putting it into practice, but it might work. Then it occurred to me, what if the center isn't along a wall? What if I have to leave the wall to find the path to the center? Ah, oh, screw it. Won't get anywhere just thinking about it. I decided to attempt the Mind Palace trick. It might not work, but it's better than no plan at all. After half an hour, I sensed the thing on the other side of the wall. I made myself really quiet. This thing was about the size of a full-grown man. Its aura was pink and ringed with olive green. It moved and turned on a corner. I watched it until it was far enough away that it wouldn't notice me. I continued, moving past rose bushes, stone walls with weird symbols and runes carved all over them. I walked along row after row after row of hedges, trying to make out my way into the centre of the maze. After an hour and a half, I came across an opening in the hedge, a short arch that I had to crouch to get through. When I peered through the arch, I saw a marble plinth. Hovering a few inches above it was a warhammer. The head had one side black and flat, the other had a two-inch pyramid that was white as fresh snow. And the handle was, as far as I could tell, chrome. Cautiously, I made my way inside, keeping my 360 view on and eyeing everything for a possible trap. I reached out and very slowly took a hold of the hammer. When I had fully removed the hammer from its plinth, the glowing stopped. As I held it, I realised it was really light, almost like I was holding a piece of paper instead of a big war hammer. I heard rustling from the opening I'd used to enter the centre, and I quickly looked for another exit, cursing myself for being so damn dense as not to look for another way out, which, as it turns out, there wasn't. Taking the weapon in both hands, I readied myself for a fight. What entered the centre was horrifying. It was a dark black skeleton dripping with some kind of black slime. It only had one eye, which was bloodshot and shooting in every direction like it couldn't focus, even when it noticed me. It staggered towards me, arms outstretched, and then the growl and roar again. It was deafening. All of a sudden, with a quickness I was not prepared for, it charged me. I only barely dodged to one side and regained my stance. The thing turned and went for a second attack. I swung the hammer and connected with the white side, and the thing shattered. I breathed a sigh of relief before I realised the bones were pulling themselves back together. The bones, however, were white. Thinking quickly, I swung again, this time the black side. Same result, and once again, it pulled itself back together. Nothing was working. And then I thought, well, if neither white nor black will work. I grasped the handle tight, and the thing rushed me again, this time... I heaved the butt of the hammer and hit it in the centre of the skull, just as it laid its hands on me. As the hilt made contact, the thing exploded into dust. I dropped and took a deep breath, a little shaken. I laughed a bit and then was startled as I heard grinding and the hedges shaking and the sound of twigs snapping. I looked behind me at the plinth and saw a path had opened up and leading out. I got to my feet and took off my shirt. I fashioned it into a sling to hold the hammer on my shoulder. As I passed the plinth, I noticed for the first time that I had a plaque that said, Paladin Proper. I walked swiftly out of the maze, wanting to get out in case it decided to close up again. When I finally stepped outside the maze, the wall closed behind me. One down, two to go. I told myself more to reassure myself than to remind myself. I could see the path forward and went on my way. It was another hour when I came to a large marble building that looked like a mausoleum. I could see inside and saw a marble dragon that looked like Brisane. I also saw bones, human and non, spread about the floor. The sun was setting, or was it? It was setting when I came in here. I looked up and saw a face watching me. It looked furious, and then I remembered Sol. He must not be happy that someone was taking the trials. Ah, sorry about your luck, bro. I said under my breath. Well, 
if he wants to watch, so it ain't going down any time soon. So I walked into the building. I looked around and the inside was more of those strange runes. As I was admiring the stone drag, I heard more grinding. I looked up just in time to see a gate slam shut over the entrance. Well, shit. As if I had said the magic words, the dragon came to life. I grabbed the hammer instinctively. Put that away, young one. It is neither needed nor useful here. If ye want out and continue the trials, then answer my riddle. Just the one and ye may move on. Understood? I thought about it and decided that if I don't, I'll probably starve to death or die of dehydration. What is there to lose other than my life? Yes, test me. It cleared its throat and dust puffed out of its mouth. I almost laughed. A man is travelling from market with a chicken, a bag of seeds for farming, and a fox for breeding. The man comes to a river with a small boat. Now the boat can only carry the man and one other item. The man can't swim and the river is too deep. How will he get the items across the river without the chicken or the seeds getting eaten? I was stumped. I asked it to repeat the riddle. At the end it said I have five minutes to answer. I thought and thought till my brain hurt. Every combination couldn't work. At some point the fox would eat the chicken or the chicken would eat the seed. Thirty seconds. Oh crap, a time limit. I strained and then I thought, wait, he takes the chicken across first, comes back, takes the fox across and takes the chicken back across and grabs the seeds and takes it across. It finally comes back and takes the chicken back across. For a moment I thought I got it wrong or ran out of time. Then after a few seconds the dragon stiffened back up. Then its side opened up again to reveal a bone dagger. I took the dagger and slid it into my belt loop. Once again a door had opened up and made my way outside. On the outside of the mausoleum was chiseled the words Paladin Proper. Cool. I continued down the path until I came across a steel golem. This eight foot tall brute held its hands in a chain like leash. At the end of each leash was tack, bound and gagged, but not just him, but two of him, one on each leash. Then a voice came from the goblin. In front of me is a friend of yours, an imposter. Guess which one is your friend. If you guess right, you both go free. If you pick wrong, I kill you both. I give you three questions you may ask. As hints, you may begin. I ran up and undid the bindings and both started to talk saying they were the real one and then saying the other was fake. I let go for a couple of seconds before I yelled stop. Okay, what's Tack's favourite animal? Tack 1. Cheetah. Tack 2. Lion. Crap. I only knew it was a big cat. I don't know what the specifics are. Figure that would be enough. Uh, what's your brother's name? Tack 1. Terry. Tack 2. Hacker. Oh, that's no help. Uh, what do you do before dinner? Tack 1. Wash my hands. Tack 2. Nothing. I just dig in. Wait a minute. That's not right. Or is it? Only one way to find out. Neither one is tack. The golem gave away nothing. Are you sure that's your answer? You only get one chance. Yes, I'm sure. Both tacks were now freaking out and begging for their lives. One was even crying. The other was cursing me. The golem pulled a huge sword and with a quickness that shocked me for his size, cut both of them in half. And then with one huge foot, it crushed their heads. I panicked a bit but regained myself when I remembered they were fakes or so I hoped. As I stood there, the bodies turned to dust and blew away in a sudden wind. You chose correctly. Glanced at the sword again and saw the words Paladin proper engraved along the blade before the golem and the sword began to disintegrate. When it was all said and done, all that was left was a set of armour made from what looked like dragon scale. I tried it on and it was light, comfortable and for what I could tell, sturdy. I slid the dagger into the holster on the hip of armour and the warhammer into the hook strap on the other side. Done. 
Next thing I knew, I was now disintegrating, but it didn't hurt. It was warm and it made me feel safe. When I looked around as soon as I could, I was standing in an elaborate and ornate throne room. Marble and gold floors with large gemstones decorated in patterns and shapes. Another plinth was in the center holding the world. I really mean the world. I saw miniature clouds drift across the lands and storms raging in different areas. Leading up to the thrones were steps trimmed with gold. Behind the thrones were pillars connected by what I guessed was peach-colored silk. The thrones themselves were opulent, with more gold and gems, but also silver and platinum, but also pewter, obsidian, and the left was decorated with a spinning globe made of lightning. The other decorated with a wooden globe, both stationed over the heads of the most beautiful people I had ever seen. Don't get me wrong, I'm straight as an arrow, but Skyfather was a beautiful man. Perfect in every sense, as was Earth Mother. At the foot of the stairs was Brisane and my stuff. I approached and when I reached the steps, I knelt down and bowed my head. Arise, young Astard the Seer. Skyfather spoke with a voice like thunder. Impressive and awe-inspiring. You have done very well to come here, my sweet son. Earth Mother this time, and her voice was so beautiful that it brought a tear to my eye and reminded me of the waves on a beach. She spoke again. You have passed the tasks of the Paladin, and as Brisane has said, you were quite interesting. We chose correctly. You have succeeded where only very few have ever done so. Many have died to stand where you are now standing. Come, receive your blessing and name. I rose to my full height and looked at the two deities, as I have striven for so long to meet and make them proud. I climbed and as she sat down, he stood and walked over to place a hand on my shoulder. As he did so, I felt an immense power run through me like electricity. And when he spoke, it was like I was going to explode with the sheer force of it all. Or starred the seer, for your accomplishments we shall name you Paladin Zihon. Accept this gift and know that you are blessed to the end of your days. As acknowledgement of your hardships, I shall give you foresight and regeneration. Receive these and use them well. When he lifted his hand, my knees almost buckled. It took all of my strength to remain standing and at attention. Next, after Skyfather sat back down, Earth Mother stood back up and approached me, laying her hand on my other shoulder. I felt such inner peace and calm like calm rivers or a gentle breeze, like nothing would ever be wrong again. Paladin Zihon, I grant you the wisdom of the old ones. I grant you leadership over the Muguan as an equal to the old ones. While you are not immortal, you will be granted the patience of one. Use these gifts wisely. May your dragon scale armor protect your soul as well as your body. May your dragon bone dagger forever be sharp. And may your dragon tail war hammer always strike true. And finally, I give you this. With this, she removed her hand. I almost burst into tears. But as I looked up, she was returning to me with a large, green, round, smooth rock. Then when she put it into my hands, I could feel its warmth. This is an egg of an old one. It is to be your friend and companion. You shall raise it, name it, and it shall be partner in all of your adventures. It shall be loyal to you to the end of your days. And now, Brisane, thank you for bringing us this worthy champion. When you return this one to its home, you may bath in the star pool if you shall wish. Brisane looked like he too might cry. We both bowed and turned to leave, and as we flew home, Brisane told me about the star pool. That is a pool of rejuvenating waters that grant a wish to any dragon that bathes in its waters. Apparently, it's a very rare and amazing gift. He also told me how to hatch the dragon's egg. It needs lots of heat. Brisane offered to help me with that. He also told me that he would be returning to its territory and duties 
but that he would come on visit once in a while to check on his favourite, Paladin. When we returned, we were met by Tack, who was radioing for the rest of the team. Everyone was in awe of my new gear, and even more so, over my dragon egg. Know what you're going to name it? Mia and Terry asked at the same time. I don't know. I don't know the language of the ancients, so maybe I'll name it something else. Actually, I think I'll name it Boon, since it was a boon from Earth Mother and Sky Father. It's a proud name, Brizane reassured me. Agent Costas then came up to greet me. Ah, welcome back, Paladin. Paladin? What happened to Seer? Situations have changed. So they have. I'm tired after my long journey, and I'm getting ready to hatch my dragon. I'm so excited. Can't wait to meet the newest member of the Naturals. Wow, wow. Absolutely riveting, awesome stuff there, Smokey Beardman. Thank you so, so much, brother, for all of your input and support behind the scenes and on the scene. <laughs> Guys and girls, you know the drill by now. As ever, please do let us know down below in the comments what you thought. Please do like and share. It really does help build the channel and our community further. And of course, don't forget to hashtag Team Fear. I hope you're all well and happy and didn't wake up with too much of a hangover after those Halloween parties. And above all, remember, be safe, not sorry. <laughs>